Well, hello everybody. Welcome to The Rock House, where spiritual growth is and always will be the foundation. <laughs> Woo, y'all, I got another word for you today. Woo. What power, what power, what power there is in the Lord God. I was running. Yes, I was running again. And I always get a word when I'm running and exercising. But I started off a little slow because my knee was hurting. Yeah, it was aching a little bit. And the enemy kept trying to tell me, you're running too much. You're running too soon. Oh, your knee can't handle that. You know, your knees, you hurt it a year or so ago. And it's really not going to work. So he's filling my head with all this stuff. And on the other side, I'm thinking, okay, you know what? My knee just needs to warm up. I got to keep going, keep pressing. So I was walking and walking and I started running, running slowly. And I eased on into it. And as I continued to run and focus on taking care of the temple, my knee started feeling a little bit better and a little bit better. So I got bold and pressed the little button on there to speed me up. <laughs> and, you know, a brother was running. My brother was running and running and feeling good, y'all. I was feeling really good. And at first I was thinking, because I was listening to the enemy, I was saying, well, maybe I'll just do a mile, you know, because it's hurting and everything. But like I said, after I started running and really getting into it, the knee started warming up and it started feeling real good. The little limp I had, it turned into a straight stride and I was rocking and rolling, y'all. I was working it out. I was going. I was going. My knee was feeling good. I was like, shoot, I can do this. I'm good. The Lord is taking care of this brother here. So I'm working it out. Before I knew it, I hit two miles. And I thought, what? Look at this brother running. And it's because I took my focus off of what the enemy was saying and started realizing the God I serve and what he's created in this temple, what he's created in me. I started focusing on all of that and just being thankful for the fact that I could run, that I could walk because there are many people who can't. And for me to complain or to dwell in or to believe the lies of the enemy about an injury that I had with my knee that the Lord has already healed, for me to dwell on that is problematic. And it would have held me to just one mile, if only that. But I refocused and said, you know what? I'm going to keep running because the God I serve, the God I serve, the God of this temple has created in me an awesome and amazing body. And he strengthened me through my legs, through my arms, through just out my whole body to be able to run and do things. So I kept running, y'all. I stayed focused on what God said about me and was able to accomplish two miles with no problem. I could have run further, but, you know, I was like, hey, the Lord is good. And I'm going to stop right here. <laughs> I'm still growing, y'all. So I stopped and realized that that was one of the best runs I have had in a long time because my perspective changed. And, you know, it makes me think about, of course, in God's word, when he was talking to uh, when Job, when he spoke to Job, you know, Job, y'all, Lord, Job went through some stuff. The Lord allowed the enemy, allowed the devil to work him out, took his family, you know, took all his possessions, took everything. He had nothing. And of course, his friends and things tried to suddenly blame him. Well, what did you do, Job, to cause that? Well, what did... And it's even his wife came to him and was saying some stuff. And he was thinking, oh, crazy, craziness. Can't be having all of that. So at some point, the enemy started to get to Job. And he started, you know, doubting God. Although he probably didn't verbally say it, but he was getting there. He was getting to the point where he was doubting God. And that's what I got from him anyway. But then... <laughs> Job 38 came. Lord, Job 38. And I'm going to read all of this. And this is going to be all of the devotional. This is the whole chapter. But this will help you understand and realize the God we serve. That's, of course, if you are a believer. And you know, this channel is all about spiritual growth because ain't nobody perfect. We're growing together. But Job 38, y'all. So it says, the title of it is, and I'm reading from the King James Version, but I'll probably change it over to the NIV, but here we go. We'll start, I'll start it out. I'm going to read the whole thing because you need to hear it all. The Lord reveals his omnipotence to Job. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, by words without knowledge, now prepare yourself like a man. 
I will question you and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding, who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? To what were its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst forth and issued from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling band. When I fixed my limit for it, and set bars and doors. When I said, this far you may come, but no farther. And here your proud waves must stop. Have you commanded the morning since your days began, and caused the dawn to know its place, that it might take hold of the ends of the earth, and the wicked be shaken out of it? It takes on form like clay under a seal, and stands out like a garment. From the wicked their light is withheld, and the upraised arm is broken. Have you entered the springs of the sea, or have you walked in search of the depths? Have the gates of death been revealed to you, or have you seen the doors of the shadow of death? Have you comprehended the breadth of the earth? Tell me, if you know all this, where is the way to the dwelling of light? And darkness, where is its place, that you may take it to its territory, that you may know the past to its home? Do you know it? Because you were born then, or because the number of your days is great? Have you entered the treasury of snow, or have you seen the treasury of hell, which I have reserved for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war? By what way is light diffused, or the east wind scattered over the earth? Who has divided a channel for the overflowing water, or a path for the thunderbolt, to cause it to rain on a land where there is no one, a wilderness in which there is no man, to satisfy the desolate waste, and cause to spring forth the growth of tender grass? Has the rain a father? Or who has begotten the drops of dew, from whose womb comes the ice, and the frost of heaven who gives it birth? The waters harden like stone, and the surface of the deep is frozen. Can you bind the cluster of the Pleiades, or loose the belt of Orion? Can you bring out Mazareth in its season? Or can you guide the great bear with its cubs? Do you know the ordinances of the heavens? Can you set their dominion over the earth? Can you lift up your voice to the clouds, that an abundance of water may cover you? Can you send out lightnings that they may go and say to you, Here we are. Who has put wisdom in the mind? Or who has given understanding to the heart? Who can number the clouds of wisdom? Or who can pour out the bottles of heaven when the dust hardens in clumps and the clods cling together? Can you hunt the prey for the lion or satisfy the appetite of the young lions when they crouch in their dens or lurk in their lairs to lie in wait? Who provides the food for the raven when the young ones cry to God and wander about for lack of food? Mm, mm, mm. Y'all, and that's a word. That is a revelation, if nothing else. So if you are ailing, you have some stuff going on, the enemy's attacking you and giving you all kinds of the blues, I want you to stand up, realize, recognize, and rebuke him and tell him the God you serve the one that he serves as well. So tell him to go back to where he belongs. Get back to hell because nothing or no one can come against the God that we serve. And sometimes we just need a reminder, just like Job. When, so when you're feeling down, you're feeling all busted up and the enemy is telling you all these lies, stand up, be strong, be bold, and tell him where to go and tell him about the God you serve. I mean, this is the most powerful God. How dare we doubt what he does and what he can do for us because we belong to him. We belong to God. We are his and he won't let anything happen to us. He's protecting us. You get it? Well, if you don't get it, read it again or listen to this again because we serve a powerful God. Thank y'all for joining me here at the Rock House. This was a very intense session, but it was necessary <clears throat> for me, and I think it's necessary for those who are watching. Y'all come back and see me here at the Rock House, where we are growing spiritually together.
And as always, I love ya. I won't do my little peace thing at the end. I'll just keep it easy. Peace. <laughs>